Martin Vikernes, the most notorious metal musician of all time, was implicated in a series of arsons that destroyed some of Norway's most treasured historic churches in the early 90s. He was also convicted for murdering a fellow black metal musician and is now serving a life sentence. Jorn Tunsberg helped Varg burn down the Asana church. He served his time and was recently released from prison. We, we did meet with Rolf Rasmussen, the minister of the Osana Church, uh, and interviewed him. Okay. Um, I'm very interested to hear from you, um, your perspective on, on what happened. The most important thing that happened was that the church was burned down. So uh, that's something I stand for, and I stood for it then. I will stand for it now, and I will stand for it like till I die. Why is it important to you that you that you stand behind your actions? Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a statement uh, to to break down Christianity. Lately, there has been a, a small trend by some people to see Christianity and any other established religion as the bad guy and Satan as the liberator, the one who can uh, really. Uh, turn you into the powerful, strong paths that you should lead. What is the, 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 the primary ideology or primary ideas that fuel Gorgoroth's music? Satan. What does Satan embody, or what does he represent? Freedom. I think whether we like it or not, black metal in Norway is, is, is known for uh, uh, a string of events that happened in the early 1990s around a series of arsons. I'm interested to know your thoughts on the actions of those events, the motivations behind those events, whether you agree with them, whether you disagree. Church burnings and all uh, all these things are, of course, a thing that I support 100%, and it should have been done much more and will be done much more in the future. We have to remove every trace from what Christianity and uh, uh, the Semitic roots have to uh, offer this world. Satanism is freedom for the individual to grow and to become the superman. Every man who's born to be king becomes king. Every man who's born to be a slave doesn't know Satan. It's in effect an elitist religion. It's only for the best, for the strongest, for the most successful. It's not for the timid or the weak. And so by that virtue alone, it won't have a large following. What can you say? words of a Christian man, so I don't care what he will ever say, you know. I know for a fact that they have lost a lot of followers, so we have been giving them a fist in the face. How do you feel about what happened to the church? Well, in a way, I think that Christianity in Norway deserved it, you know. It, 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 in the beginning, it was, you know, it was not something uh, the Norwegians choose. It was forced upon them, so. You can say that, you know, that's a thousand years ago, but, you know, but I, I wasn't sad, but I wasn't really happy either, but, uh, I mean, in a historical point of view, Christianity deserves, you know. I think society creates extreme people. It's like with, uh, you know, a free democracy usually deserves its leaders, and it's also, it, I, I would say it usually also uh, deserves its outsiders. If every metal band wants to be more extreme than those that came before, then burning churches certainly took things to a new level. But these actions say less about metal's theatrics than they do about Norwegian cultural sensibilities. Resentment towards Christianity in Norway stretches back a thousand years to their Viking ancestors. In any case, the majority of metal fans, including myself, could never understand or defend these extreme actions. <laughs> I love going to Norway and Denmark because I love picking up the black metal magazines. It's so spinal tap. <laughs>
because each band is trying to be more wicked and evil than the other band, you know. And it's, I can't, I can't turn the page without, you know, look at this one. You know, here's these guys in there. You know, and, the, and you know these guys when you meet them in the mall, they're, hello, Mr. Cooper, how are you? Nice to meet you. My mother's right over there. Could she have your autograph? And I said, I thought you guys were like Satan's or something, you know. It's, it's like, well, yeah, we are, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very rarely do you meet anybody that's truly scary. Thirty years ago, parents were losing sleep at night over Alice Cooper. Looking back, Alice seems harmless compared to church burners. But in the 70s, people thought he was actually killing babies and executing himself on stage, night after night. Well, I mean, I was the, I was the poster boy for controversy. <laughs> so in some ways, I think I invented it. Uh, because, I mean, you know, we were the first band to get, we got banned in England, we got banned, and nobody could figure out why they were banning us. We asked them in London, where, what are we banned for? And they couldn't name anything. I said, is there any nudity in our show? No. Is there any bad language in our show? No. So what are we being banned for? Well, there's blood in your show. Has anybody ever seen Macbeth? Some more blood and Macbeth than my show, and that's required reading in school. There was no real definitive rock vampire that was really the creature of the night, and that's what Alice was supposed to be. If you say, welcome to my nightmare, you don't just say it, you do it. Give them the nightmare. You know, show them the nightmare. <laughs> Since Alice Cooper, nightmarish images of death and violence and metal have only become more vivid. Nowhere is this more prevalent than in the most extreme subgenre, death metal. Building on thrash and black metal, death metal's ingredients are guttural vocals, machine gun guitars, and horrific album art. The most infamous band in this subgenre is Cannibal Corpse. In Germany, the first three Cannibal Corpse albums are banned, Eaten Back to Life, Butchered at Birth, and Tomb of the Mutilated. Any songs from those records cannot be played by the band live. They're also banned in New Zealand, first three. Uh, we have to use alternate covers in, part, in Australia. Uh, a lot of stuff is banned in Korea. There's evidence to demonstrate that uh, um, the average um, young person growing up today sees more violence uh, through popular culture um, than ever uh, would occur in real life. This is being marketed uh, in many instances to young people, particularly teenagers, who won't have the social context. They don't have the background of how violence has informed our uh, human condition over the years. And, and so what they're left with is um, uh, the glamorization of weapons and violence as a form of conflict resolution. This is a band by the name of Cannibal Corpse. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard of them. And they have been at the center of a significant amount of controversy regarding primarily their artwork. And mm -hmm. this is their latest album, mm -hmm. which was just released, called The Wretched Spawn. Tell me about what you think of that. Well, it's uh, things are even worse than I thought. I mean, you've obviously uh, uh, uncovered uh, some of the latest leading edge uh, examples of. Uh, um, what's out there in the music world. I mean, I just can't see how uh, responsible uh, societies could turn a blind eye to this kind of thing being uh, sold and marketed to young people as a form of harmless entertainment. First time somebody who knows nothing about the death metal scene, the first time they see, you know, one of our album covers or something like that, you know, it's going to shock them. If it doesn't, then, you know, we're not... You know, we didn't make a very good album cover. It's, it's art. Just look at it as art. You know, yeah, it's disgusting, but I mean, there are lots of there are lots of things. You go to the Vatican and look at some of the art there. Whew. That's yeah. that's real. That's that's representing something that's real that could happen. You know, this is just obviously that's never going to happen. You know, um, you know, uh, monsters aren't going to come out of you know aren't going to rip out of people's bodies anytime soon. I don't think. On the one hand, as you see in lyrics by a band like Cannibal Corpse there's this fascination with the possibilities of death and the body. On the other hand, there's this terrifying fear of it. There's an almost obsessive desire to 
explore that which is dangerous, that which is scary, that which points towards obliteration, formlessness, a delight in exploring the body in its ways of being cut up, destroyed, and mutilated. That's a very primal desire that we all have. There does seem to be a connection between how um, acquainted we are with our own mortality and how much we want to see mortality and death uh, expressed in our art and culture. If you look back a few generations, uh, you'd expect uh, within your family, several of your siblings to have died. When these people died, they would be laid out in the front room. You'd go and see them there. Then afterwards, you'd probably sit down to a meal and where you'd be eating meat and you'd be well aware that this slab of whatever it was had been living and breathing a few days back and it might very well have been you that cut its throat. You knew that death is part of the very essence of life and as we've begun to forget this, we seem to crave images of death and fear more and more. I don't really have a good reason why I craved images of death or mutilation when I was younger, but I do remember sitting on the bleachers after school, my buddies and I, we, we used to compete to see who could come up with the most brutal metal lyric. And my favorite was Autopsy's Charred Remains. I'll just read a bit for you because uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Burning from the inside out, bloody foam spews from your mouth. Smell the putrid stench of flesh as it burns you to your death. And like afterwards, we would always just like have like total round of high fives. Like, yeah, man, that was fucking brutal. That was awesome. I still think this music is harmless entertainment, but a lot of people think that metal lyrics have a serious effect on kids. Over the past 20 years, metal artists such as Judas Priest, Ozzy Osbourne, Cannibal Corpse, Slayer, Marilyn Manson, and Slipknot have all come under fire for causing teens to commit murder or suicide. Although none of these cases have succeeded, the cases keep coming. Every time a serial killer or a mass murderer or a Satanist or any evil person in our society, any time that the media has found out that they listen to heavy metal music, it has been blown up as the reason, the reason du jour for why this person is doing the things that they do. You know, aha! Uh, they were Manson fans, see? That's why they slaughtered all those kids in the high school. American news especially keys in on violence, you know, it's, and they, they're trying to promote, you know, how wonderful American society is, and all they show is bloodbath at high school in Denver, you know? And, and they, they use that as a byline for like two, three days, you know? And they sucker a lot of people in. Um, one of the lines we wrote a while back, it's in Disciple, actually, is the beauty of death we all adore, because TV sucks you in and makes you want to see more of it. I do think it's crazy to somehow argue that there is no relationship between the imagery and metal and, you know, some teen suicides and some, you know, acts of violence. Sometimes metal messages are confusing. I mean, the song Suicide Solution is about drinking.